Hey, what's up, I'm Andy. I'm just gonna do a very shallow introduction to observables. This is for anyone who is very new to obs observables. That's a very hard word to say, observables. Uh, for anyone who's very new to it and just wants a very quick, brief introduction. This is not a advanced uh, introduction to the topic. It's just a very brief introduction. I'm just going to go over the very basic topics. Hopefully you go from having little to no understanding, be a little bit confused by uh, the whole observable uh, ecosystem to just having a good understanding and be able to jump right into it if you're using it. So really quick, let's just start out with a brief explanation of push versus pulling systems in uh, JavaScript. So you're used to, more than likely you're used to uh, your regular pulling system. A polling system is essentially just a regular JavaScript function. So you have some sort of some function, and that's going to be called later on in your code. The function could literally just return the value, let's say one, right? So that value will not be returned until something calls it. The relationship here we're talking about is between a data producer, which is the function, and a data consumer, which is that which is calling it. So the consumer in this case is when you actually call the function. Now, the best the way to think about this is that the control is at the caller of the function. So the consumer of the data is in control and the producer is just giving that data when it's called. That's a pull system. That's what we all know about. And a function is a classical, I guess a classical case, but it's, it's the case where one value is going to be returned. Now, let's talk about a push system. A push system that you have probably used and that we're all familiar with is that of promises. If you've used Angular before or uh, Node, that a promise is a typical push system. And what that basically means is that you have a promise, which is the producer of the data, and then calling that promise with a promise dot then, and then you uh, consume that data. The only real difference there is that the producer of the data is in charge of letting the consumer have the data. So the consumer says, I'm gonna go ahead and I want some data, and the producer is gonna do some stuff. It may return it immediately, meaning synchronously, more than likely not, but it's going to be uh, delivered at some point in time in the future. This is a good distinction to know because that's where observables come into play, and they are essentially a push system as well. However, they are a push system for multiple values. So when we talk about observables, here's all you really need to know. An observable is just a collection. That's oversimplifying it, right? An observable is just a collection, but an observable is a collection that's basically uh, returns uh, anywhere from zero to many values, and it can return it synchronously or asynchronously. So let's even simplify it from there. It's essentially a collection that's returned over time. Ah, so there's one thing that I forgot after shooting this dimension. Uh, the big, big, big distinction to make with observables, just like promises, is that the producer of the data, so when you create the uh, uh, observable, that is in charge of giving information, I should say giving data to your consumer. So you subscribe to an observable, but the observable decides when to give that information. That's an important distinction to remember. Specifically with RxJS, um, the Reactive X library uh, created by Microsoft, there's also some other cool stuff attached with observables, and that is the method operators that you can chain onto an observable to filter data, to sort it, sort of like, no, I shouldn't say sort of like, exactly like Lodash or underscore does as well. So keep that in mind, that's one of the biggest benefits that I like about observables. Let's dive into observables so we can just have a basic understanding of what observable does and what maybe some of the things that you can do with it. So I'm just open JS bin here, and I'm just gonna do uh, a quick introduction to some of the features of an observable, specifically with RxJS. So the first thing we wanna do is load up RxJS through the CDN. Here you can see the link. I'll actually uh, include the link to this bin, so you can go ahead and take a look at it and play with it yourself if you want. Uh, real quick, we're just gonna add the library here, and then we're gonna add script tag. We're gonna do some, some, some fun stuff. Now the first thing we wanna do is create an observable. Now the when we use the create method on observable, it's going to the first argument is going to be the observer. And that's where we can actually start returning values. We can actually return, we can throw errors, and we can mark the observable as completed, meaning there will be no more 
uh, values emitted from it. So the first value we're gonna, I'm sorry, the first argument that's gonna pass in is, is we're gonna say it's O, but that's the observer. We're gonna use uh, ES6 arrow uh, syntax. Now, keep in mind here, this is, we just created an observable. Now, because we know that an observable is a collection, how do we know what's going to be returned? Well, in this case, Anytime that we want to return a value, we are going to call the observer, so O, and we're going to say dot next. And then whatever we want to return here, so say it's a string that says some value, that value is going to be returned. So that's really the ba basic gist of it. Now if we do, if we want to return two values, we can say O dot next and another value. This is a very simple understanding or simple explanation, but as you can see, there's going to be one value. The first value is going to return to some value. So it's a pretty simple explanation. You can see in this specific observable, two values are going to be returned. The first is going to be the string sum value, and the second is going to be another value. Now, like a function uh, that's never called, this value, these values will never be returned by anything because we haven't subscribed to it. So if we want to subscribe to it, all we have to do is say observable dot subscribe. This will be our consumer of the data. And then we want to actually console log this data. So we're going to say the value that's returned from this observable, we just want to console.log it. And we're going to say value. It's important to keep in mind here that because we've made a very simple observable, this is going to be run synchronously. So this is going to be run right after one after another. There's no asynchronous actions occurring. So Let's open up the console here. Let's go ahead and run it. Pretty simple stuff here. So some value and then another value. Now, if we actually want to throw an error in the case of, let's assume this is some sort of, the observable is actually an HTTP endpoint, but we get a, an error status that returns, we can say o.error, and then we return an error. Say some error occurred. Go ahead and run that. So as you can see here, an error was thrown and it wasn't caught by our subscriber here. So we'll get back to that in a minute. So now let's say the observable is done emitting data and we want all of its subscribers to know, all of its consumers to know. All we would do is use the observer argument and say o.complete. Now let's just go ahead and run this. Nothing special is gonna happen. As you can see, some value, another value is still there. However, let's say we actually moved it above the another value being returned. What that will essentially do is it will not allow any more uh, values to be emitted from the observable. So let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, that worked exactly as expected. Now, let's keep in mind here something as well. In this observable, we're subscribing and we're just getting a value back. However, we can do much more than that. We can also be notified when the observer has completed emitting values. So let's go ahead and look at that as well. So we're going to go ahead and move our value down here. We're going to catch an error. Console.log. We're going to say error. And we're going to show the error as well. And then when it's complete, complete won't have any arguments passed back. So now, again, keep in mind, we can subscribe to the value. We can get uh, any errors that are tossed back to us. And we can be notified when we're, the subscriber has completed and no more values will be emitted. So in this case, we should see all done up here because we've completed. See, all done. Some value was emitted. All done was uh, to return back to us. And if we want to throw back an error, uh-oh, something went wrong. That will also come back to us. That's really the basic gist of observables. Let's move on to a situation that you may encounter that makes more sense. So let's go ahead and create a button. And in the button, we're going to basically emit values. And anytime a value is emitted, we're going to want an observable to produce that data to a consumer. Very simple stuff. So let's go ahead and create a button. That button's going to say, click me with an ID of the button. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now in the uh, JavaScript, first we're gonna capture the button element. From there, we're actually gonna create an observable. Now keep in mind here, from an observable perspective, an observable is just a collection that's returned over time. So we wanna just capture anytime the button is clicked. 
So from a consumer's perspective, that is an asynchronous operation because I click the button when we first load the page and then 10 minutes later, I can click it 100 times in a row, I can click it every five minutes, I can, it's, it's can be whenever. So in this case, we're just gonna attach a, a, an event listener to our button. We're gonna listen for clicks and every time a click occurs, we're gonna return that value to our consumers. And that value in this case will just be a string that says button was clicked. However, keep in mind that in this point, nothing's actually occurring because we haven't subscribed to our observable. Our observable is sitting there sort of like a function literal. Nothing is occurring. It's just sitting there waiting to be subscribed to. So we have to subscribe to it in order to do something. So we're going to subscribe to our observable and the value that comes back from the observable, we're going to console.log it. So let's go ahead and open back our console. Let's go ahead and click our button. Button was clicked. So that gives you a really good uh, basic idea of observables. You know how to produce data from it, you know how to throw errors, and mark when it's completed. There's definitely more to observables than just that, but as a basic dive into this, that's all that you really need to know. For more information, definitely check out uh, ReactiveX documentation as there's a lot of good, finer detail things in there to know about observables in general.